it is. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Amol Chobe. Uh, I'm a principal development architect at Ericsson. And today we have uh, hands-on lab for OpenStack Manila. Uh, I'm here with my colleague, Sudhir. Hi guys. My name is Sudhir Ketamaka. Uh, I work with Amol uh, on a cloud management solution in uh, Ericsson. Um, I'm here pretty much to help uh, assist Amol. He's the expert here for Manila, but I'll be able to answer any basic questions you have about setup or dev stack um, while we do this lab. Thanks, Sudhir. Uh, this lab session is divided into three different parts. Uh, we'll have a short presentation of 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll have a lab introduction, and then we'll have the hands-on uh, some four or five labs. Um, we have sent out a link on the web page to download the OVA file, but if you don't, uh, if you have not downloaded it, we have the USB sticks lying around here. So if you want them, uh, uh, feel free to grab from here. You want anybody want them? So uh, go ahead and copy the files. Uh, most of the USB drives which uh, we are distributing are USB 3, so it should be copied in four minutes. But a couple of them are USB 2. So if you are one of the unlucky one, it will take 15 to 20 minutes to copy. So be careful about that. Uh, uh, how many of you have a virtual box installed on your laptop? OK. So. A uh, couple of things I would like to mention about that. Uh, oh, there is empty. Which one is that? Green or? Uh, okay, you can have this one. So if you have VirtualBox already on your laptop, um, there are two separate networks that uh, these images are predefined with, OK? So for the default network, it's uh, 10.02 slash uh, x and then 192.168.64. So if you set up your VirtualBox accordingly, then when you boot up the VM, you just need to run one uh, script called presetup.sh, and that will start up your uh, dev stack in a proper fashion. Else, you'll have to rerun the entire setup of dev stack. I would strongly suggest to ha create your network accordingly. Okay. So, if you want, uh, what we'll do is uh, start copying the stuff right now on your laptop. I'll go through the short presentation. And then we'll spend another 15 minutes or 10 minutes on setting up the lab, uh, lab or a dev stack on your laptop. OK? So did everyone got a USB to copy? <laughs> Is everyone fine? OK, good. So
So uh, let's start with the basic introduction of OpenStack Manila. So what is Manila? So Manila is a file share service in OpenStack that provides the management of the file shares as a core service to OpenStack. So if you remember, Cinder is a BSV, block storage volume service, which was limited to one vir uh, virtual machine. You can mount it only on one virtual machine. So that, that solution had a lot of limitation because some of the products where we need uh, NFS storage, where you want to mount the same file system on multiple VM. So essentially, Manila is a network file system uh, storage as a service in OpenStack. Okay, it has a vendor, vendor neutral API for provisioning and attaching file system storage. So on the back end, it really doesn't matter uh, what uh, vendor you are using for your NFS solution. Uh, but you will, from OpenStack point of view, you will use a Manila API to go in. And it also strives to provide API compatibility with uh, Amazon EC2. So that's, uh, they made a lot of improvements on that in the Liberty uh, project. But overall, what is Manila, right? Manila is a, life, is a full life cycle share management service where tenant can create, delete, list, or get details, create a snapshot, or get access to shares, and coordinate the mounting and unmounting of the share service. Um, it uses a share access rule, so you can specify uh, uh, what IP or what user you want to connect to that Manila share, and it also supports the full multi-tenancy. So in terms of architecture, the Manila service architecture consists of the following key components. One is Manila API. For, for which you'll use the REST API to connect to. So uh, Horizon or a REST API that you can use to access Manila. Uh, Manila Scheduler, uh, it is used for scheduling and doing a routing. So when you spin off uh, uh, or when you request a new Manila share, the first thing it will do is it will go to a Manila Scheduler. And we'll learn later in this presentation that there is something called Manila uh, types, uh, where you can influence some decisions uh, for the schedulers. And then Manila share. So Manila share is the one which is actually talking to the backend. Now, there are a lot of dif different terms in Manila, um, like uh, backend, then share. We'll go through each, all the key concept of those uh, in the next slide, okay? But in terms of the architecture, uh, so Manila Scheduler, Manila API, uh, Manila Share, it also has a database, uh, SQL database, and it also has a auth manager, uh, which is responsible for user projects and roles. Um, there is a nice CLI interface. In the lab, actually, we do plan to use the CLI interfaces for doing entire lab. So the key concept, right? So Manila, like a share, what is it? The share is a shared file system where users specify the size, the access protocol, and the share type. Um, then there is a snapshot, uh, which is a point in time, time copy of the share. What you can do is you can take a snapshot of, uh, of a share and later on use that snapshot to create another share. So you can basically go, go into a point in time uh, copy of the share whenever you want it. Then share type is an uh, administrator defined type of service. And this is where you can specify something called extra specs, which is uh, like a key value uh, for the scheduler. So uh, one example could be if you want uh, your share to do a thin provisioning you can go in and create a type and specify uh, extra specs in the key value of like uh, thin provisioning is equal to true. And the drivers, that is a vendor specific drivers, each vendor has their own specific drivers. So those 
drivers will have that logic where they will take into the information of the share type. Uh, then share network. Uh, it's a tenant-defined object that informs the security and network config of the group of shares. This is in the background. You will not see this in the front. This will happen in the background. Um, this share network we will be using in our lab because we are going to use a generic drivers uh, in our lab. We don't have an access to the proper backend uh, uh, share types. So we will be using this particular thing in our lab. Then security service is a set of options that define the security domain uh, a, for a particular uh, shared file system protocol. So what does that mean is uh, your backend, uh, that is your network file system service, right? It need authentication. And here you can use uh, uh, a protocol such as Microsoft Active Directory domain or uh, uh, Kerberos domain, that kind of stuff to authenticate uh, your share story. Mm -hmm. Then um, network and subnet. Now these are relevant for some backends only, but in our lab, this is we are going to use it uh, quite heavily because we are going to use a generic drivers and. Generic drivers in background, what it does is, is spin off a VM and where that VM will act as a NFS uh, server, okay? And then backend. The backend is the instance uh, of Manila share service and it has a driver. Now, this driver is the response, normally what happened is it's a responsibility of the vendor who is creating the backend. So for example, if uh, you have a NetApps as a backend. So NetApps will have its own driver for OpenStack. And that driver you will use uh, in the Manila config file. So shared driver, that's the one we are talking about. It's the piece of the code that map the standard Manila operation into vendor-specific operation on the actual storage controller. Um, then network plugin. Uh, network plugin will tell Manila about how to manage network resources for drivers, uh, backend that manage the shared server, and storage controller. And that is where the actual, it's actual physical uh, equipment that vendor build and sell storage controller and write a driver for them. So your EMC, your NetApps, and all that stuff is basically a storage controller in this context. There are a bunch of CLIs. I have not listed all of them here, but uh, these are the most common CLI that you see uh, for Manila. And we will be using uh, almost all of them in our lab today. There are different drivers currently available uh, in, uh, in the Liberty release, uh, all of them. This project had started, uh, has been part of the OpenStack since, uh, it started development since 2013 and has been part of an official OpenStack uh, from 2014. So from like IceHouse, Kilo release, a lot of drivers have been added to it. In this lab, we are going to use generic driver as I mentioned uh, earlier. But there are uh, other uh, drivers that are readily available. And if you have a backend storage uh, with this particular vendor, you can certainly use them. So Manila generic shared driver, this is what we are going to do in the lab today. Basically, what happened is when we use a Manila generic shared driver, you issue a command called Manila create. Okay, Manila tries to look uh, whether they're into a manila.com file and check what drivers you're, you're using for this one. And once it realized that you're using a generic driver, by default, what happened is uh, it uh, add a neutron port for a VM. It, uh, it spin off a new VM, which will act as your NFS server, and then it calls, it's make a API call to Cinder that will create 
uh, block storage volume of whatever size you have requested and it will mount it on that NOAA compute automatically. Once the VM is up and act as an NFS server, you will basically go to the any VM, uh, VM another VM, uh, and that's where you will manually mount that NFS file system. And that's what actually we are going to do in the lab, where we will basically uh, use that uh, NFS server VM, and we'll spin off two extra VM, VM1 and VM2, and mount the same uh, file system storage on both the VM and see the data on that. So where to start? The, if you are not uh, familiar with uh, Manila and you want to play around, uh, you can uh, go on GitHub and um, clone uh, the Manila repository. Or there is a, if you want to report some bugs, um, the launchpad uh, address is there for the bugs. And there is a wiki for Manila, which has a lot of information on what you can do with Manila and what are the upcoming uh, um, extensions coming for Manila. In this Liberty release, which came out like uh, 15 days ago, there are some extra features had been added to Manila where you can basically extend and shrink your uh, share. So if you have a share of like a two gig and you want to expand or shrink, you can do with the API call now. Uh, share migration, that's another thing. So if you are in the hybrid storage mode where you have multiple vendor, and if you want to migrate a storage uh, from one vendor to another, the share migration feature had been added. Um, then big data, uh, that's uh, Sahara. That's another uh, component uh, in OpenStack. Uh, that support has been added uh, uh, for Manila as a data source. And uh, some more support has been added for the mount automation, where you can mount a network uh, file system storage on the VM automatically. Uh, they ha it's still in development, uh, it is not complete, uh, but at least in the Liberty release, it has been, uh, some of the features have been added. It differs from each deployment. You can uh, basically, you need to decide for your deployment what model you want to use for that, like a push, pull, and other for that mount automation feature. But this mount automation feature is the one which differs Manila heavily from Cinder, where Cinder doesn't have this capability today of the mount automation. So using Manila opens up a lot of options for deploying application in OpenStack, where when you are moving from a traditional lab structure and most of, most of the application where you end up using an NFS storage, uh, you People have migrated to OpenStack, but they end up using a local procedure or some local scripting to migrate to OpenStack. Now they can directly migrate using uh, Manila. Hands-on is the key. Uh, there is, uh, while designing this lab, actually, I had um, run into a lot of issues, uh, and hands-on helps us to troubleshoot and learn the product. So hands-on is the key here. And then we'll start with the lab. Uh, before we start with the lab, any questions on Manila? OK. Um, one thing uh, in my presentation, I only covered about uh, generic driver. There are tons of drivers available on net. Uh, perhaps for some uh, simulators might be available too from the big vendor like IBM, uh, NetApps, uh, and EMC, uh, but I didn't get a chance to try those out. Okay, so how many of you has already copied the OVA file on your laptop? And how many are able to spin off the dev stack? Working? Okay. 
So let's uh, let's start with it then. Um, like, uh, what I will do is uh, I will import. Hello. Okay. I will try to import a dev stack image uh, on the screen, and you guys can follow me on how we are doing it. That will be simpler. Okay. You can, I'm a little older. I'm four. I have not tried, I'm on 4X, but it should be fine. I don't see any issues with that. Because the OV, yeah, because OV is backward compatible. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, one thing that you all uh, who are not uh, who are not familiar with VirtualBox, you need to make sure go to your preferences and network. You should see there are like a two different types of network here: a NAT network and a host-only network. In the NAT network, you need to ensure that you are using. Uh, 10 0 2 0 slash 24 network CIDR um, and support DHCP option is enabled. That one thing you need to ensure. And the second thing in the host level, host only network, uh, I'm, I think I'm using this one, number two. Uh, you need to ensure that uh, you're using. Uh, the IPv4 address of uh, 192.168.64.1. Uh, if you use that and you spin off the, this OVA or you import this OVA on your virtual box, you should be able to basically start using the dev stack right away. So in order to import it, uh, basically you will go here and click on the import appliance and then you will basically go and select uh, select this uh, OVA which you had copied. Um, one more thing that I would strongly suggest if your laptop has ample amount of memory, uh, by default I kind of uh, gave the RAM of uh, 5180 MB here, but if you have 8 GB memory on laptop, use this one. This should be sufficient to run the lab, or the default setting. But if you have 16 gig of RAM on the laptop, I would strongly suggest to bump it up to eight, eight or nine gig. And then basically you will click on import uh, once that done. Once you click on the import, it will have the dev stack uh, VM in the power off mode. And then you will basically start it up. Yeah, then. The so, uh, how many uh, you know, have this problem that the image is corrupted? Image is corrupted? Okay, so I guess try the, with the new one. I should have put the MD5 sum perhaps of the image.
This is corrupt. This is corrupt. How many has the dev stack up, at least just like this screen? Just up. Uh, can the, okay. This. <laughs> this is empty. Yes, it is already uploaded on the, uh, I will share the URL uh, towards the end of it. Yes, it is. So once it, uh, once it up and running, uh, open the terminal uh, by doing Control Alt T, or you can type terminal. Okay, either you go here and type tor and terminal. No, so the image has been created with 60 gig, but it's a thin provisioning. So you image, so max image can grow up to 60 gig. I just want to try to bring it up at the VMware. It just doesn't go away. No, because VMware, I'm pretty sure, is trying to do a thick provisioning, which is looking for that space right away. Okay, so the virtual books, I don't have that. Okay, so you go to a terminal and there is a script called presetup.sh. Just execute that uh, script. What that script does is it drop your ETH0, ETH1, and it uh, restart it. And also, it goes into dev stack and start up all the processes. So what you are seeing on the screen right now is it is it's a screen of dev stack where it is starting up the processes. And you can have uh, you can leave that up and running. And if you are using a putty or some other um, SSH client. Um, You can, hold on, I'll show you. By the way, if, uh, to get out of that window, you have to hit right control key. And once that is up and running, what you can do, once the, you kick off the process up and running, you can connect to that uh, VM using this IO. 192.168.64.21, devstack at that address. The password for devstack is devstack123. And basically, at this point, um, another thing I would suggest you is uh, just to check whether your dev stack is in good condition. Go to a dev stack folder and do the source in this OpenRC admin. That will basically source in the dev stack related uh, variables in the environment. And uh, you can just type uh, neutron netlist, something like that, which should bring up uh, the network list, which is pre-configured in this dev stack image. Hmm? 
People who have it already up and running, uh, for those people, yeah, Google Share has a lab actually. Let me point out the link. Uh, so if you go uh, for the folks who have the dev stack up and running, uh, go to the Google uh, uh, Google Drive and download, there is a PDF called uh, lab underscore manila dot PDF. Do you have a PDF on your laptop? I do have a PDF on my laptop. I don't have internet access. Yeah, I can copy it. No, that PDF is hardly of a kilobyte. So you should be able to download it right away. Oh, that that will take a long time. No, no, that's okay. Uh, actually, I means if you are not able to do it, don't worry because you are taking it home anyway. You have all the files. And the PDF, the lab PDF, which I have, uh, it had literally step-by-step -step command uh, written there. So you should be able to follow it. Here it happened automatically. Open stack so when they uh, started the service, um, they realized that it's not going to be that easy to have people try to start. So that's why they were using the Yeah, yeah,
So this is admin and the password. Okay, yes, it is. So the dashboard login ID and password is admin foobar, F-O-O-B-A-R. Nothing. I'm not using Nothing. Just, just disable this one. Okay. Uh, so let's. Uh, anyone need any help with the?
So, um, about the labs, right, uh, I'll just show you real quick. So if you have DevStack up and running, uh, you will bas basically uh, in this first lab, you will check the status of the service using a service list. Um, these are the default networks uh, that's on the uh, image itself. So your network uh, UUID will be one and the same. And in the first lab, basically what we are doing is we are creating this Manila Share network. And in order to do so, uh, this is the command. Now, some of this command, be careful about it, uh, where this uh, particular one is the dash dash, and it can be, when I convert it to PDF, some, uh, sometimes it can uh, be read as a single dash rather than the double. So be careful about that. And this will, the first, command that you are running is the share network create where you will pass on a private network UUID and a subnet of that private IPv4 subnet of that private network and you will create a share network. Uh, this is only need to be done on the generic drivers. You don't have to do this on uh, um, non-generic like uh, backend specific drivers. And this will create, uh, basically, this will create a share network. Uh, and what you need to keep uh, eye on is this uh, UUID. Uh, in this lab example, this UUID is a UUID when I created this. In your case, this UUID will be 101% different. So just keep a note of that UUID. Okay, or you can get that UUID like uh, by uh, running this Manila share network list, and that's a UUID here. That's the first lab, which is very s couple of commands only. In the second lab, you will basically run the Manila create uh, uh, command, CLI, and here you're going to cut and paste the UUID of your share network. And the NFS is the protocol, that's the protocol we are going to use in lab. And this is the size uh, one. One size is the size in the gigabyte. So this particular, when you create, when you run this particular command, at that time, it will go in NOVA and spin off a virtual machine. Now, this is the Ubuntu virtual machine. And DevStack, uh, we are running on this uh, virtual box with very minimal resources. It is approximately will take five to six minutes for network to be accessible. So even though you see the status in NOAA, the VM is active, that doesn't mean it is accessible from the networking aspect of it. So one more thing is while designing this lab i realized that by default uh, manila has a timeout of 300 seconds so when you uh, try to spin off a vm it only it look for 300 seconds 
it try to SSS to that VM constantly. And if it cannot SSS to that uh, virtual machine, it basically give up. And uh, that was happening quite often on this, uh, purely because we are running on virtual box and lack of resources. So I bump up that parameter uh, in this particular file of Manila to 600 seconds. So that way it will take 10 minutes to create it to network, uh, attach to a network and all that. Uh, approximately in my testing so far, consistently it takes about six minutes for you to uh, get the network connectivity. You are uh, in very good shape if uh, at the end of it, after seven, eight minutes, if you run this uh, Manila list command, and if you see the status is available, you are in very good shape. If you don't see that status is available, that means the virtual machine that is created by Manila for you is not in a good state.
Again, the URL is here to download the app.
Actually, we are running out of time. Uh, uh, one thing I would uh, recommend you is go on this web page. I have updated it uh, last night with the lab uh, files and all that stuff. So you should be able to uh, run this lab at your convenience at your home. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, second thing is uh, these labs, I just want to go over it real quick just to let you know. So the first lab that we do is where you create a share network and you first check the status of Manila, you create a share network. In the second lab, you go and create a Manila share. And what that is going to do is, that is going to uh, That is going to create a VM with the NFS server. So what you see highlighted in the red is that exactly will be done in the lab too. It is going to create a VM which will act as an NFS server. Then um, uh, that again to create that VM is going to take uh, approximately six to seven. Uh, minutes so be careful and it is this lab is successful only if it is in available state as seen uh, one user had an error when it went to the error state it didn't uh, it didn't come up in the available state in that situation look at the logs and check out what error it is reporting most likely it will go into a error state due to two reasons either it doesn't have uh, Network is not created properly or you are running out of memory. That is the two most common reasons. Once that lab is done, you are going to create, uh, spin the VM and manually, uh, once that VM is up actually, you are going to give a Manila a privilege to, for that VM to access the share. And then this command, um, neutron net update shared, uh, this I have, 
I have added it in Manila. You don't really have to do this. I have added it so that we can use Manila VM as a jump, jump host to go to the VM that you have created rather than going to a console. Uh, so this is only reason I have added it so that it will act as a jump host. Then, and because of that, from Manila VM, you are going to SSH to the VM and mount this NFS. Uh, you'll repeat it for the second VM and mount the same uh, uh, same Manila share and see if you can edit from both VM at the same time. Then there is a lab, a lab number four. It's for the snapshot and the resize feature where you'll create a snapshot of Manila uh, share. And then you'll also extend and shrink uh, the Manila share. There are a lot of stuff in the snapshot as well. I just listed out those commands. And the last lab is about a share type. This is a very important feature. If you start using Manila more, this is going to play a big role. Share type is going to play a very big role in your implementation of Manila. Because that's where, in this lab, uh, this part, Manila extra specs list, that is the one which is telling the Manila scheduler to make a decision on what to do and what not to do. So this, the more and more you started using Manila, this is going to pay, play a very big role. Um, then you can, there are some extra uh, stuff for the type access and all that. Then you can, edit the uh, metadata to have some uh, information. So there are some commands on that one. And this one, um, I ran out of time. And anyway, in the lab, we have not got to it. But uh, there is something called uh, consistency group. And that is a very good feature. So if you have to take a snapshot and you have an application which depends on a, a database, so just taking a backup of application doesn't make a sense. A snapshot of the application doesn't make sense. So if you create a consistency group and associate a share with that consistency group, you can take a snapshot of both the like a database and the application at once. And you can rely on that snapshot. So this is a very great feature. Um, this feature uh, is very well matured in Liberty. So you should be able to use that on the VM that I have given. This VM uh, I have created on uh, October 7th. So it has a Liberty RC2, if I'm not wrong. So it does not, does not have the final release of Liberty, but it is a one week before that. And it is pretty much good for Manila, unless there is some update or bug fixes came out in the final drop. Uh, but you should be able to use this uh, consistency group feature. And then uh, we talk about a couple of scenarios where to look and what to look uh, in case of uh, troubleshooting the Manila share. So you should be able to do this lab at your convenience at your home. And uh, if needed, uh, And if you have any questions, send out an email to me or Sudhir and use uh, OpenStack uh, Commit Tokyo in the subject line. And uh, either one of us will respond to you.